this month is my personal favorite part of Chinese martial arts, and it's Qigong. And Qigong is my favorite because I feel it does two very important things. One, it strengthens the body, the mind, the breath, and the qi. And two, it prevents injury. It's a very important thing. Because I'm only 28 years old. I'll be turning 30 next year. So I'm relatively young. But when I'm 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100, I want to still be doing this because I have the health that's gained through the practice of Kung Fu. So if you're older than I am, practice this. This is very beneficial training. And this video serves as a more advanced Qigong video, so if you're a beginner, I would not suggest beginning with these postures. There are other postures that are very simple. They're based off of animals, they're based off of uh, religious texts, and they're very good ones to start with. This one is after a few years of training, you get a little bit more advanced, and you get more uh, bodily awareness, and that's what we're gonna do in this video. So we're gonna showcase about three, five postures. The first one, I think it's a fantastic posture because I enjoy taking these postures and relating them to how you use them in the Kung Fu, in the striking, in the punching, in the kicking. And each posture is directly translatable into, into a fighting move. Okay. So for the first one, uh, think about when we punch. When we're sitting in a horse stance and we're sitting low and we drive that punch in and, and snap it, we drive from the hip and torque the hip into the target. We snap that punch. Not from the head, not from the shoulder, from the waist. So the next, the first posture is a great one for getting you used to throwing punches and power from the waist. Okay, we can warm up this posture with some push-ups. So go into a push-up position and make sure form is everything. Keep your shoulders dropped, your back straight, your stomach sucked in tight, your legs straight, and be very, very slow. Breathe with it and go all the way down. So we're gonna do this five. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Don't press on the ground. Just get one inch away. Breathe in. And out. One more. Good. Warm the shoulders up. Then from there, we're going to put the hands around reverse style. Okay? We're going to trap those elbows against our ribs because that's where the punch is going to be thrown from the base of the rib cage. So from here, bring the arms. Down to the ribs, kick the body into the air, and make sure the entire body is parallel to the ground. So extend the legs, try to get your arms as straight as possible, and make sure the head and the feet are on the same plane. Okay, and do five breaths. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. In, out. Two more. in the air, that's a lot easier, but it's much more difficult to keep everything parallel and flat to the ground with the head and the feet in one plane. Okay, so that's your more advanced stage. Okay, from that position, we can even have it kind of a part B of this posture to give you some more training. Put the fingers facing forward in a push-up position. Okay, and from here, just go to a push-up, then just drop the elbows down and kick the legs into the air and hold your legs up about 90 degrees together as high as you can go. You just hold there with your chin off the ground. And then down. And then push up. That's a really good one for a lot of core and spine strength. Okay? The next posture that's very beneficial is for kicks. Think of it when we throw a side kick. We lift that leg and we extend it out. Okay? We lift that leg and we extend it out. That squatting motion is pivotal for sidekick power, accuracy, and health. So for the next one, it's one-legged squat. We have two different ways to do this posture. The first way is we can grab our foot, extend it out into the air, and keep the spine straight. We can sink all the way down as we breathe in, and then we can press all the way up as we breathe out. So breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Two more. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. It's a very good posture. 
That's the beginner version. The more advanced version is you want to take your leg and do not hold on to it. Keep it out in front of you, parallel to the ground, and do not let this leg touch the floor at all. Okay? We can thrust it out. We breathe in, we go down. It doesn't touch, breathe out, come up. Breathe in, down. Breathe out, up. Breathe in. Breathe out. Two more. Keep that leg up. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more. In. And out. Good. So those will condition the muscles to throw those big side kicks, thrusting them out that way and that way. And the last posture that we'll show is for all nature of other kicks. General kicking, hip flexibility, leg flexibility, okay? Whether it's throwing a really good roundhouse and holding that leg out there, or creating really good snap and power, we wanna have flexibility. So we first grab this leg around the shin and pull it up, balance. Second step is grab the shin, pull it toward your head so the leg is flat. Third step is grab the foot and we extend the leg so it goes into the air as high as we can go and balance on one leg. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Two more. If you smile, it helps. One more. And down. Okay. So, well, Maybe we'll show one more posture. It's very important too. So just to recap, we have punching posture, balancing that plank for that snap, punch this way. We have the one-legged squat, down and up for the side kick power, this way. We have the flexibility posture, grabbing and extending for good balance and good flexibility on our kicks. And the last one we have is all about core strength. When we fight somebody, and they're in front of us, a lot of this waist turn is a crucial move because it allows us to escape blows from the hands, from the feet, just a little, with just a little move of our core. So having a strong core is essential, plus having the freedom of spinal flexibility to bend, to sink, and to give us general health. You watch any person that gets older, and they're in poor health, they can't stand up straight. They hunch over, they look depressed, they look stressed. I feel sorry for them, and we just can't have that. We want to be 100 years old doing kung fu. We want to be proud, chest is out, back is straight, walking around like we own the place. Okay? This posture is for that. So we lay back, start from a lay down position, put the feet up, the hands down, and we're going to back bridge up all the way. Your goal is to walk the feet toward the hands and extend your arms up as high as you can. So breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out, higher. Breathe in, higher. Breathe in, higher. Two more, higher. One more, push. And you're good, you can walk it up all the way onto the feet using that core, okay? Then stretch it forward a little bit, palms to the ground. Okay, practice these four postures. These are tough, but I challenged I didn't challenge. I required my most senior students in my class this month that by the end of this month, they have to be able to do that floor plank posture off the ground, arms only for five breaths, or else we're going to designate half of each senior student class for that posture until they got it. So I challenge or request to do the same thing. Practice these and really master them this is my favorite area of martial arts, and I hope it's yours as well.